All right. Welcome to this channeling session with Ms. Marilyn Monroe in the afterlife. Today is a very special date on our human calendars, and that is June 1st. It is her birthday. Birthdays are so special because they're your incarnation days. They're the moment that you followed through <laughs> and came back in to this human life experience. And as we know with the history and the heritage of Ms. Marilyn Monroe, we know that the energy that she came into this world with was a plenty. Now, even though in her human life, there were a lot of different stories and various accounts of, of difficulty, not just in her own relationship with herself and her own identity, her own um, beliefs about herself or confidence in herself. Maybe confidence isn't the right word, probably self-image is a better word, and struggles that she had regarding that. Also, her family and having a lot of different types of caregivers and being an orphan at one point and having a mother with mental health issues. I mean, these kinds of things are some of the things that we, you and I in our life can also relate to. But yet seeing someone like a Marilyn Monroe and seeing the fact that she had such a gift and her gift was her light, by the way, her gift, it wasn't the talent, it was the light that she held. We all share that, we all have that light within us. And she was able to, despite all the adversity that she faced, the suffering, the tragedy, the abuse, and the trauma in her life, she was able to hold on, not tight to that light in the belly, but open to share that light. And that's all she really focused on. There were other things on um, the human path that she really, really wanted in my time channeling her, which there's a great playlist at Above Life Channel. A lot of different conversations I've had with Marilyn, casual from chatting with her in my kitchen to having deep conversations with her about life, about love, and all sorts of things, Hollywood. There's a lot of information that she has shared, but I, I really feel as though I know her and can understand some of these, these experiences that she had as a human being, but also that the undercurrent of her energy provides for all of us. And part of the reason why we're so drawn to her is because of the light, the light that she shined, even in the most difficult times that she, she struggled and she suffered, she still had her light. No one, no experience, no man, no woman, robbed her of that light. And so we honor her light today, like the light on a candle, like the candle on a cake that is lit for her. There would only be one because there is only one Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> Although there are many impersonators. And today I dressed up a bit for her. I actually have a dress on <laughs> today and had to wear the earrings that I bought from one of my channeling videos because of her. And I, it's so funny because now during this time, my hair has gotten so long because we've been indoors. It's, Janu or it's June 2020. So we've been indoors for like three months, can't get a haircut yet, even in the state of Minnesota. And so my hair's just grown and grown and grown. So I thought, oh, she's going to love it because I can curl a little, little bit, put some hairspray in it, and she likes it longer anyway. <laughs> Not super long, but you know, she can do it up a bit. And so... Um, it's my pleasure to honor her and dress up for the occasion of channeling Ms. Marilyn Monroe, <laughs> Norma Jean, on her birthday. Okay, you guys, let's, let's bring her in. Let's bring in Ms. Marilyn. Okay. Um, I have a suspicion that she will really take over the place. And so uh, I just wanted to ask her what her, her feeling about birthdays. I do want to talk to her about current events if we can, if that feels appropriate. I don't want to have it be too heavy or serious, but it's up to her really what she wants to discuss. Um, and if there are things that you're dying to know or you're living to know about her, then uh, we can post that in the chat window, okay? All right. Okay, so let's see. This thing is like kind of behind my head. I don't know if I like that too much. Okay. All right. Okay, Marilyn, would you like to come in, please? Oh, she's gorgeous. 
<laughs> she has this really tight body snug dress on like that um, iridescent like see-through dress that she's saying happy birthday <laughs> to the president remember like that but you guys I don't know exactly the color of it, it looks kind of silvery on the outside but it looks salmony almost like a really really pale pink like a nude color it's very it's really pretty it's interesting though because it doesn't go down deep whatever the dress that she's wearing right now it's not super plunging neckline it's higher but it's like nude at the top kind of or like a pale pink at the top and then it does go down a bit so it's sheer here so oh you look so beautiful says, oh thank you like i just want to stand up and hug her you guys i'm just going to do that come on come on have a seat come on come on let's have a seat here I'm gonna have a seat. Let's go. I'm gonna move this here. Have a seat. We'll we'll put you kind of by your your human picture because it's so much easier that way. Okay, I'm gonna slide you over a little bit here. Okay, there we go. Okay, I'm gonna have a, just a drink of water here. Hmm. You always make me smile so much when I see you. <laughs> you guys, seriously, I cannot smile. Our energy is so good. So let's make sure everybody feels your energy. Okay. So let's take a nice breath in. And exhale out. And she's like, <laughs> this is the energy. And it's all really light pink, just like the flowers. If I could have went to the store and bought flowers, I would have bought you the most beautiful pink flowers. And they would have been pale pink. Do you know why? Of course I do. Because we're just like two little girls hanging out and talking. I know, right? Just the sweet, delicate, lovely, compassionate. You are so compassionate. And I just adore you energetically as a spirit. You're so, so lovely to talk to. And there's a great deal of respect for you, for the beautiful gift of your light that you've shared with the, you've shared with the world. And you continue to do that. You're such a, leg a legend. Like, I, I le you have such a legacy. You're such a legend. So, oh, isn't, she says, oh, isn't that so sweet? That's so sweet of you to say that, Bridget. So sweet. You do look beautiful, she says to me. You do. You do. You look so beautiful. Like she wants to, like she's like grabbing my cheek and you look so beautiful. Look at these cheekbones. She's like, <laughs> okay. I probably should have put more blush though, because then you could really see them. But look at these cheekbones, she says. Like, no fillers, okay? I'm not, I'm not 50 yet though, Marilyn. So I'm sure eventually I'm gonna need some, you know, things done. Did you have work done? I was gonna ask that. I have never really talked about it because I don't think it's really polite to do that necessarily, but let's just talk. It's just us girls, right? With the light pink, pretty pink flowers, right? Can you tell me here? I'm gonna flip this back so it doesn't catch on my pretty dress here. Okay. All right, so can you tell, do you mind talking about, oh, no, no, I did have some things done. Yes, I did, I did, I did. But I would not recommend it unless you really, unless it's really important to you, then I would, it's quite painful, quite, quite painful. And then she's showing me like her nose, like something on the bridge of her nose, and she's like, quite, quite painful. It did not break my nose, not how you would think. It's not like that with all the bruising. It's not, it's not that barbaric. But she's like, my nose, I did have my nose done. And then she's showing me like her cheek, like she's saying her chin, or I'm sorry, her cheek, her chin. She's showing me her chin, something about her chin. I don't know if it was rounded out or something smoothed out. She says, I don't think you know this. I don't know how, how well or widely it is known, but she says, I had, I did have a challenge with my skin. I did really struggle with my skin. You know, in those times we, did not, we worship the sun, we loved the sun, but it was not a good thing to have a suntan, not on the screen. In fact, more makeup would be added to make sure you were very, very fair skinned. The lighter, the better, and the more peak toned, the better. It was not for the peach toned girls. So there would be lots of makeup. So if I found myself out in the sun for too long, because back then, you have to understand that we did not use sunscreen, not as you do today. And so it was something you had to be very careful about. But yeah, you're in California, you're in the sun all the time. And it is nice, like without being in the studio, it is nice to have a tan, to have a bit of a tan, but you have to be careful because on screen there was this, and, and a certain image that was preferred, it was much more of a pure look. And so, and then she's seeing me something Max Factor or working with 
um, makeup. And so is it true that you use Vaseline too? Like, I think I heard that or read that or saw that or somebody, I have many clients that love you. I have a couple really, um, um, actually one that I can think of client that really, there's actually two, but one really that knows a lot about you and is really connected to you. Did you use Vaseline? Yes. He said, it's the best beauty serum. If you put it like right under your eyes, it would help keep the wrinkles away. I'm like, Marilyn, you did not even live that long to have any wrinkles. Did you? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. You just, it's never too soon. And she says, put it under your eyes. And she said, yes, your lips right here and your lips under your lips so that you didn't have these wrinkles that you have. You start to get these, you know, when you get older, you get these little wrinkles right here. And you, we didn't have what you had, what you have. The, um, wait a minute, wait a minute, stop, stop. So like she's showing me injections like in here. So they didn't have like Botox type stuff or they didn't have like fillers and stuff. Nah, no, 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 nothing like that. We don't have that. We didn't have that. We didn't have that. The timelines are so interrupted because I feel when I connect with Marilyn, I feel like I'm with her there. And then at the same time, I'm here channeling and sharing the information with you. And so I'm trying to keep it here and real for all you who are watching. <laughs> this channeling session with Marilyn Monroe on her birthday. But I feel like I'm there too. If that seems a little bit weird, it's okay because I'm comfortable in that timeline. So, okay. So, no, you didn't have injections or that. No. Okay. Okay. But she's just caking on this like Vaseline. It's really greasy looking, you guys. Really greasy. Okay. So, um, okay. So that's, that's um, beauty. <laughs> Talk about beauty. Okay. And, and she says, oh. so Marilyn, if you weren't an actress, what other parts of Hollywood or the movies or television would you see yourself maybe working in? Or would you have done something totally different? Like if you came in and weren't Marilyn Monroe and were to have to choose a different job, would you, what would you pick in like the film industry or TV, what would you pick? Let's ask that first. Oh, she says, oh, I don't know. I would like to be a writer. She says, well, you were a writer. Yes, yes, that's true. And you were a producer. Yes, yes, that's true. But not really to the extent that um, you had to almost be a man to do that, to be really taken seriously. To be a writer, you know, yes, that would be, yes, I would like that very much. I would like that. To be a writer. So if you had to choose between singing, dancing, or acting, which would you choose? Mm, I don't know if I could choose. Mm, that is a hard question. It would probably be acting, yes. Mm -hmm. it would because it is such a story. It's such an opportunity to let people just escape their lives and, and the, the tragedies or traumas that they're experiencing. They might be having a bad day or they might be having a bad week or a bad year or a horrible relationship or just having such a difficult time. And the movies or television now for you is such a way to escape in, in a way that's safe, in a way that's, that's rather healthy for you. And to know that you can help someone feel better for even just a while, that, that would be my choice. Acting, yes, an actress, yes. Did you have a favorite movie? Oh. Oh, not just yours, like any movie. And she showed me Casablanca. It was so, wasn't that so romantic? So romantic. She's in Casablanca. So romantic. And then um, there's two people. She showed me James Cagney and Jimmy Stewart. So I don't know if those were crushes or men that she liked. <laughs> <laughs> look up to I don't know but she shows me those two men and you guys are gonna think I'm crazy but I don't know was it James Cagney that was in Casablanca I think it may have been 
can't remember. I don't remember you guys. Um, but she's showing me those two men. Like, oh, are those men you would have wanted to work with? Oh. <laughs> she says, Jimmy Stewart's a hoot. He is so funny. He's so funny. He can be a little aloof, but he's funny. He's very funny. And she's showing me, um, James Cagney is very good looking, but there's something about his breath that she doesn't like. And I don't know what that's about. I don't know if it's a story or if it's a thing or what the deal is. Um, and then she's showing me, okay, so she says out loud Greta Garbo, which I have channeled also. I don't know what that, um, oh, the, an entertainer. She says, oh, an entertainer, strong woman, such a strong woman. She was so successful. So successful, so completely successful. She could pretty much write her own way. Anything she wanted, she could just do. It just worked out for her. But I'm sure she went through quite a bit of struggle to get to that point. But and she's showing me her, like holding her up, like as this beautiful, like very successful, smart, intelligent woman, kind of that energy, strong. All right. Okay, so. Today is your birthday. In human terms, I mean, of course, in the afterlife, how old would you say you are in the afterlife? Like when people, when you show up most often for people, when they're channeling you, you personally, how do you show up? Like about what age? Oh, just before 30, about between 28 and 30, perhaps, you would probably say, yes, like 28. She says, you have to understand that that would be mature for your time, for, um, for my time, but maybe not for your time, but about 28, and maybe 27, 27, 28. Okay, and why is that? Because it's less than 30, but more than 25. 25 is just a little bit too young. Although in the golden age of Hollywood, 25 was like the peak, or so it seemed. Then you get to be an old maid. <laughs> after that I cannot imagine being an old maid after 25 can you guys imagine that I cannot imagine being an old maid really well then I must be practically dead oh no 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 she says no 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 you're so beautiful you're so beautiful I know I know what you can say all you want but we are going to age here and we are going to be okay with that oh I didn't want to age I was not looking forward to it at all not at all not at all so did you have a sense of when that, hmm, how do I say? So obviously age is something that you didn't want. And that was common, I think, in Hollywood at that time. Even nowadays, actresses are like, uh, I mean, we're getting better at aging more gracefully and allowing women to age and not just have men be silver foxes, but allow women to be mature and make contributions and have beauty mature as well in our images of beauty in our society. So obviously you had like an adversity to age, like you know, I wasn't into the age thing, aging. So as you, I, I believe you died when you were 36, that feels about right. Did you, um, I don't know how to ask this question, did I want that? She says, did I want that? Is that what you're going to say? Had I had children, I would have stayed. Uh, couldn't you just see Grandma Marilyn? <laughs> I would be the best grandmother. I would be a favorite auntie as well. But I, I never really had, I didn't have sisters like you have sisters. I didn't, I didn't really have family like you have family. That's always there. And so there wasn't really um, a certainty for me. I, I suppose for a while when I was having children or in that place where I was pregnant or trying to get pregnant, I would say that I definitely felt uh, more hopeful of life and the longevity that you, you all seem to seek and want so desperately. I will never understand that really though, because beauty does, it does change, it does age and if I was maybe a school teacher or something, that would be okay for me to go about my, my life. But I, my, my entire, everything was based upon my look, the way I looked. It was based upon Marilyn and not normal too. 
Ah, interesting. So did you, so can you come back around besides switching to the Norma Jean versus Marilyn? Because that would be an interesting thing to talk about, wouldn't it, you guys? Um, can you talk about the, can you very specifically share, did you kind of have a sense that you were going to die young? Like in our terms, 36 is not old, okay? And in this modern age, maybe back then it wasn't, it was like midlife maybe, but now it's not. Midlife is closer to like, 45 or something. So like 10 years difference approximately. So did, did you have a sense of that? Oh, oh, I, you know, I never really thought about it. I didn't, I can't say that I was afraid to die, but I can't say that I was happy to live. There wasn't really much thought even in the moments when I had the chance to just sort of disappear, I, I never really came face to face with those, those big choices, you know, those big philosophical life choices of mortality and what's right and the gift or the preciousness of life, I never really, I can't say as I didn't understand that life was a gift. I, I, I can't say that I, I didn't feel that way. I, I most certainly understand how precious, especially with children, how precious the gift of life is. I didn't really consider myself as someone who would have a healthy long life. I, I never really, I just thought I have what I have and, and I, I am going to, to just be every day. I'm just going to live. And I never really thought I wasn't or, or, or that was something would happen to me like a car accident or something. I, I never, I didn't, I wasn't afraid. But I, I didn't really think about it. Not as a person. So in the afterlife perspective, Mayor, did you now, and when you look on your life, do you have any kind of a bigger understanding about the time of your death or the frame of your life, the reference of your lifespan, like age zero to 36, that kind of thing? Do you have any kind of insight on that? Oh, several. She says, oh, many, many, many. Thank you. You know this to be true. I'm, I'm going to ask you to try to speak up a little bit when I'm translating. I'm trying to push forward more in my throat. But she's, she becomes, you guys, she does become, she takes on, Ms. Marilyn Monroe does take on kind of a motherly energy sometimes when I connect with her. And it's more of a softer spoken, very sort of wise, peaceful energy as almost like an ascended master version of someone or a spirit that transitions that is evolved over time. And to be clear, Marilyn is not reincarnated. Is that true? She says, oh. It may be. That may be true. But it doesn't mean that there are not aspects of me that are coming in or that you can connect with in the world. That's a complicated thought, isn't it? Ah, what if reincarnation isn't as simple as you perceive it to be? Either you're here or there, why can't you be both? Interesting. That's really deep, Marilyn. We might have to have a video session just on reincarnation and your thoughts about that as a higher spirit aspect. So can we, can we shine a light down onto the, the, my, the frame of your life, zero to 36? Can you talk about that? Do you have a different perspective now as a spirit in the afterlife? I think we all want some hope from that, right? Like, please tell us we're going to learn or we're going to grow or the stuff we're going through right now is going to serve a purpose. Please tell us that. It's kind of how I feel inside. <laughs> I'm like, please, Mary, tell us that. Hmm. It's very personal, you know. It's very personal, our experiences that we have. Can you do it? Speak up and then pull forward. 
<clears throat> the voice. It's very personal, the experiences that we have throughout our lifetimes, individual. Family means a great deal. This is something I wasn't quite able to find during my lifetime, it's Marilyn, or it's Norma Jean for that matter, because as you mentioned, there are two overlapping energies. A Marilyn Monroe, a personification of all the magical parts of me and the light being channeled into this incredible image, this incredible woman manifesting what it is that I came to be for others. And that lasts long beyond my human life. It has so much more than my human life. It is the legacy and the icon, the iconic energy that you connect with. That's part of the purpose from my life, the zero to 36, as you say, 36 years was quite a long time to create such a imagery. Something that would last an imprint on the world, but not for selfish motives, for the inspiration for others to follow through on their own dreams. If I didn't have my auntie who believed in me, oh, she's gonna make me very emotional. I'm gonna get really emotional. I would not have been the person you know me as today. She says, thank you for that. You're welcome. It, such a pleasure to love and support you, my dear. Always such a pleasure to love and support you. So beautiful. Without someone that cheers you on, that believes in you, that sees that light in you, it can be so, so difficult. Everyone, everyone does have someone. There is someone. It might not be in your family. It might be some mentor. It might be someone you never get to meet, but they inspire you so much that you just, you feel as though you know them, your kindred spirits. And that is true. That feeling, that connection you have to that person, that is so true. That can guide you. That can really give you hope and in many ways courage to be who you are really who who you came to life to be and that's not an easy thing it's not easy it, it can be very very difficult and very painful and i do not want to pretend that life does not hurt it hurts so much there are so many moments of pain i know suffering i know how it feels to hurt, to ache inside. To not be able to have a family, have children, was one of the greatest pains of my life. And I think it just, it just overlaps how much, I mean, it makes sense now. It makes sense now how much the, the world needed Marilyn, not Norma Jean. And I would say that I, I did at times lose myself, which in part made me so crazy. It just, it, it made me so crazy at times. It's so, so crazy. And, and that is something that you would consider mental health or mental illness. And, and, and there was worry, those around me worried that I would be like my mother. And I worried, I worried, it was a fear of mine too. And I didn't want to go mad, you know. I did feel it. But it's hard, it's hard for me to know if it was, Marilyn and her time was done, or if it was Norma. Norma Jean needed to come back. I, I don't know that. I can't imagine going back to 
a life even though I at times really dreamed of that, you know, picnics and children and swimming in the pool and a wonderful father who loves the children and, you know, making dinners and, you know, being at home. At times I really dreamed of that. But I don't think it was for me. I don't know that I really had that choice. I think perhaps when I came back in, that was already decided for me. And that having a baby would not have, it, it would have kept the legacy of the life of Marilyn. It would have kept it smaller. But that's not to say or to belittle any other woman's accomplishments or influences in movie and film and in Hollywood, that's not to diminish anyone else's. Or to say that had I not been Marilyn Monroe, that there wouldn't be another that would have been like that, that would have caught your eye, that you would have been able to enjoy for years and decades to come and even be talking to now. There's not a selfish ownership here. It's not, it's not like that. It's not a selfish ownership. It's a, it's a painful, but it's a sacrifice that was made. Whether in human, human life, I don't know that I recognized that. But I do now, and that was your question. I understand now. I understand that now. There's really no one to blame. None of my husbands, none of my lovers, none of the chemicals in my body, even though that would make sense, wouldn't it? Had I been treated properly for some of the, the mental issues, issues and the concerns that I had. Yes, I, I could have escaped some of the paranoia that caused me so much fear, trauma, you guys, trauma, like she literally like makes me, like my throat gets tight and my heart gets like tight, trauma. And it's not that she's on high alert, it's that she just closes down. And then the only part of her that can come through is little Norma Jean, like a little girl image. It's almost like multiple personalities, you guys, what she's showing me and helping me to feel. But it literally feels like she had two lifetimes in one lifetime and realized once she created and connected fully to Marilyn Monroe, she couldn't really go back to Norma Jean. I mean, she couldn't, and she kind of tried to find herself and bring Norma Jean back into Marilyn Monroe, but it wasn't working. It was not going to work. And that's how it feels here. Is that, is that an accurate reflection, my dear Grace? Yes. Okay. She says, Bridget, are we going to toast? Yes, we are. Enough of this sad, depressing energy. Don't you have enough of that, she says? Don't you have enough of that in your world? Let's celebrate. What should we celebrate? What should we cheers to? Oh, I should have brought another glass. I only have one. We can share. She said, we can share. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, you guys. Um, before we toast, let's ask if anybody has any specific questions so that we can maybe respond to them. Do you don't mind, do you? Oh, no, no, no. I've got... All right, I'm going to check the chat window. While I pop open this barefoot bubbly, this is pink Moscato, you guys, but it's a bubbly kind. And I have a nice, oh, did you hear that? Ooh, here comes the bubbles. Here comes the, Ms. Marilyn had to have the sparkling wine or champagne, just so you guys know. This is something I actually just started to drink after, um, as far as wine and stuff goes, after I started channeling you. This is that, oh, it's lovely, lovely, Miss Bridget. Lovely, oh, look at, oh, look at the bubbles, you guys. Oh, look at the bubbles, ooh. <laughs> Okay, I see a question pop up here. So let's respond to those who are joining us live. This is one of my group channeling sessions, um, small groups that I offer. So it's a service that I offer on my abovelifechannel.com. Okay, so let's see. So I gotta get real close here to look at this, look at this. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so do you know about the song Elton John wrote for you, Candle in the Wind? How do you feel about it? And how did you choose the name Marilyn Monroe? Oh, the name was chosen for me. Or she says, I'll say that. The name was chosen for me, Marilyn Monroe. It was pretty much decided for me. It wasn't all that complicated or all that spectacular. It just, it sounded nice. It sounded pretty. Don't you think it fits? It fits, don't you think? I liked it. I thought it was very pretty. I think it was very pretty, she says. All right, so candle in the wind. Did you know that? And she says, oh, Princess Diana. Yes, he redid the song for Princess Diana. Yes. Oh, I think it's more about her now at this point, she says. Have you met Princess Diana? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. She's done so much work with children, you know, so much work with children. Mm, she's, she's so lovely. She's so beautiful. Her eyes are so beautiful. Oh, my gosh. Thank you, Marilyn. She just, <laughs> I don't want to say that out loud. I don't want to compliment myself. She said, like yours, Bridget, like yours. <laughs> She must have blue eyes, maybe. <laughs> so, okay. All right. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you. She says, oh, well, but thank you. Thank you for the compliment, she says. Okay. Um, when, okay, what brought you peace during your life? Okay. What brought you peace during your life? Oh, she says, hmm, reading or writing? She says, reading. I love to read. Oh, the story is so just could just get lost in them, you know? The stories, reading. Reading would be the first thing, that would, probably the most. Yes, that would be, that would be what I would say. And then she shows me journals, you guys, journals. I do actually have a book of yours somewhere around here. Oh, I don't know what I did with it. Oh, I think it's over on the chair over there, but I have a book of lots of different, it's called Fragments, lots of different, I should, I'll put a link below. To, to it in the, in the replay link of this video. Fragments where there's lots of different, coll a collection of lots of different things that you wrote, like uh, just scratching out words for a poem or a prose or, or even a journal entry on like letterhead at a hotel or lots of little notes and things like that. And it was said that you kept lots of journals and someone said that there was like some really special like little red journal or something like that. Oh, she says, oh. There's so many stories about my life. Isn't it crazy? Isn't it just crazy? So dramatic, so dramatic. I would never have said, I would never have shared any of those things. I would never have shared those. I would never have fancied myself as a writer or an author. I would have had to have been published under a pen name. That's something that could have been, that maybe could have been an option. But I, I would never never want anyone to read my journals or my private, my personal writings. You know, they would know my thoughts, my personal thoughts. And that's, that's very private to me. That's very, very private to me. Okay. Okay. All right. Those are lovely, lovely questions. Okay. So let's cheers. Let's do a cheers. Okay. Let's do that. All right, you guys, let's do a cheers here. Oh, we have one more question. Let's just check quick and see what that question is. Oops, I just moved. Oh, I guess there's a musical called Bombshell. It must have something to do with you. What do you think of it? Oh, musicals. I, I could never be a stage actress. I could never, it would be far too stressful. It would be too, 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 too much to be an actress on the stage, but I have so much respect for Broadway and so much respect for stage actresses and actors. And I just think it's so wonderful, so talented. They are so talented. I could never do that. I, I would be so worried that I would mess up and, and you know, just mess up the play for others or mess up the the, the, the experience for others, I, I just, I don't think I could do it. I could do a number. I could do like maybe a variety show or do, do a number on a show. I could dance or sing, but that's so much different than acting on a stage. I, I, I can't even imagine. That would just take so much talent and that would be just too, too, too much for me. Too much for me. Thank you for the question, she said. Okay, you guys, let's cheers to Ms. Marilyn Monroe. Hold up your water glass, your coffee cup, your teacup, or your wine glass, and let's do cheers 
to a wonderful birthday and many more lovely connections and conversations with Ms. Marilyn Monroe from The Afterlife. We look forward to so many more lovely, insightful conversations with you about Hollywood filling us in and some of the secrets and things because we do want to know about that and the gossip. But I don't usually do gossip on a Love Life channel, but in a small group, we could do some gossip and that'd be fun because it's just us girls. Like Marilyn said, right? Just us girls? <laughs> of course. All right, so let's cheers. Mm -hmm. mm. All right, Marilyn, do you have a specific message that you would like to share? You can come on over and share space with me. All right, we're gonna share space, you guys. You guys might know this as a transformative channel experience. I've done these before. I did a couple on Above Life channel for the public YouTube channel, but I prefer to do them in private, small groups instead. It just feels more intimate that way. I feel a little more comfortable doing them that way. So again, a trans channel or transformative channel with Ms. Marilyn Monroe. She's going to share a little message. Do you mind doing that? Oh no, let's have another one of these, she says. <laughs> mm. She says, Bridget says, it's five o'clock somewhere. It's like noon when I'm recording this. <laughs> Central time, I don't usually drink. I'm not a big drinker. And here's the middle of the day. Hmm. All right. And to be clear for anyone else at those channeling, do not do it when you have had a beverage or multiple beverages. Don't do it under the influence. Okay, that's not, I do not condone that. That's not gonna help you. People think it does help you spiritually connect. It does not. It just loosens your inhibitions, that's what it does, but you don't need that for spiritual connection, just to be clear, but we wanted to celebrate Miss Marilyn's birthday, so. All right, let's see if she'll come in. Oh boy, yeah, I can feel right. I haven't done this for a while, so I'm gonna let her, I'm really gonna let her come into the center. Come in here. She does not possess my body. I'm just gonna be clear on that. I wanna make sure they know that I'm fine, okay. I'm gonna keep my eyes closed, please. message. Mm -hmm. Of course, I'll leave a message oh, to bring light into this dim world. It's so much, so much suffering. But it's not for me to focus on that. It's to bring up the hope, the inspiration, oh, the feel good. Watch a good movie. Enjoy, enjoy the simple pleasures of life. Bring up the best parts of who you are. It's who you are becoming. You have the choice. It's who you are becoming. Ask yourself those very important questions. And support one another. Support each other as you can. You can. You have much more power than you believe yourself to have. I do want to just cry. I just want to cry for you right now. I just want to cry. Bridget has so much sadness in her heart and I can feel it. I just want to cry for you, with you. I know there's pain. I know, I know, my goodness. I know there's pain. But you, you do not have to be a part of that. You don't have to let that be your legacy. You do not have to let pain be your way to share and to 
communicate with each other. Take up your pens and write. Let yourself be free to express the best parts of your humanity, the best parts of you. Bring forward the loving nature that you are. Bring forward so much of the goodness and know that we are all shining down upon you. All of us, many of us are watching. We are holding you so close in our thoughts and our energy, our love, our lights shine with you like candles on the memorials. We are here with you. We are right in your heart, right at the heart of the matter. We would never abandon you or leave you in these desperate times. Focus as much as you can on what you are becoming, what you have to share in your, your gift with the world, your light. Focus on that. That will help you to see the beauty in things. And perhaps to allow for forgiveness and understanding, compassion for others who are different, who are experiencing things far deeper than you are. That's not to diminish anyone's plight, anyone's struggle or suffering. There's no need for comparison or competition. There is really only love. There really is only love. And that's the message. Mm -hmm. That's the message I would like to share. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you. She arches my back so much when she talks, you guys. <laughs> she makes me sit up so strong, literally pushes my back forward, like arches my back in ways that are like un impossible. Like she must have had such a tight corset or something on to like push up her bosoms. <laughs> because it instantly feels like I'm arching my back so much. I cannot wait to watch that. I can't wait to watch that. All right, lovelies who are here in this live channeling session, our small group channeling session. I hope you've enjoyed this experience with Miss Marilyn Monroe and celebrating on her birthday here in June, on June 1st to be exact. Thank you so much mwah, 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 for being here. I'm gonna give you guys hugs. I'm going to send you guys hugs. Thank you so much for being here. We are going to donate um, the money that you contributed to a charity right now during this time. There is a charity in Hollywood that helps to support actors and actresses who are not able to work during this time. And it, it's, it's able to help provide them with food and things like that. And so we're going to donate to that charity. Okay, you guys, I'll post a link to that particular charity also so you can see it. And so thank you, my ma. Thank you so much for helping to be part of this. Now stick with, stick around after I turn off the recording. I want to have a chat with, with you as well. So just one moment. Thank you so much for watching. This is Bridget at Above Life Channel. You've been watching a small group channeling session with Ms. Marilyn Monroe in the Afterlife. If you're interested in being part and purchasing a ticket for a small group channeling session in the future, check out AboveLifeChannel.com where I post on my online group session page the upcoming opportunities to have these, to participate in these sessions. Thank you so much for watching.